Welcome, everybody. Hello. Ah, oh, there we go. We, we like our audience participation for, the, for my first 15 minutes. Uh, my name is Dale Smith, and I'm Director of Creation for Bridge Training and Events. And tonight we have a double header coming up to Christmas on storytelling. Anybody here a storyteller? <coughs> okay, I guess that's how we have to define it. You know, is that your profession? But have you ever told a story? So who here's a storyteller? Okay. So who aren't putting their hands up, I would not want to go out for a drink with you. Because <laughs> we all love a good story. You know, but it's about how we define what is storytelling in business and in leadership. Because uh, it's, it's not just about making up a great story. It's about how we articulate that story and utilize it for engaging employees, building a culture, building a brand, uh, and how we move businesses forward, both as either leaders or as people within the organization taking it forward. So tonight we have two speakers. We've got Robert Pratton, who is CEO and founder of Transmedia Storyteller. Uh, so Robert will speak first tonight, and then what we'll do is take questions at the end. So after Robert finishes, then we'll be handing over to Allison Ezzy. Ezzy? No, the Ez. Ezzy? <laughs> I've been practicing that to make sure I get it right. Um, Allison uh, is CEO and founder director of Storytellers. So they both are coming, I think, from storytelling from a slightly different angle, but obviously from a complementary angle as well. Uh, and then at the end of both of the presentations, then we'll have a Q&A and we'll open it up to the, to the delegates to participate. And then following that, what we will do is we'll be having drinks and canapes in the bar. Uh, both of the presenters will be on, uh, available to have questions. Oh, they brought us drinks. <laughs> She comes in with two glasses of wine, but only one person. OK, all right. In order for me to kind of prepare for any, any one of these bridge talks, I spend a lot of time just really thinking about the subject. And uh, I began thinking about storytelling when we put it in the program over a year ago. Um, and over that time, I've been more and more amazed about how scientific storytelling is. And what a true art it is when we actually look at it within business. I mean, personally, I've always loved a great story. <laughs> and anybody who's ever been to any of my presentations know that I can probably take most of the time just telling stories. Because stories are something that always, I find, for me, it connects people. It inspires us to be more. And truly, it gives us vision. I read a piece of research many, many years ago about the power of innovation in the brain. And when the brain is innovated to think in a new way, it actually excretes chemicals that is used for memory retention. And that's that kind of magical stuff that sits inside of a story. Now, and I know that Allison is going to take us into a little bit more of that research. Uh, but that was about one little bit of, of piece of information that began to make me think, wow, that when we inspire people, they remember us. But not only do they remember us, they connect to us. And not only do they connect to us, we allow them to see things that they may not have been able to see on their own. The power of the human mind is fascinating. And when we begin to learn more and more about how the brain is mapped, uh, it, there, there's some amazing research that I, I've looked at. And I'm, I'm not going to talk too much on it, because I know that's gonna, something that Allison talks on that I found fascinating. Watching the different parts of the brain light up. When I tell you something, doo -doo, but when I bring it into a story, something that you can truly connect to. Because there's also a part of the brain that actually when you are seeing something happen, whether it be it, it's something I create, or even watching somebody else, your brain thinks it's happening to you. And I guess I could, I, I did this once at a, at, a, at a talk I did. And it was really interesting to watch because I was filming the audience. And what I did was I showed a man getting kicked in the groin area with a soccer ball. Guys in the audience, what do you think happened to everybody in the audience when they seen that happen? Oh, the whole groan went away. Because when we see things, we participate in them. And the job of a great storyteller is to allow people to see things that has yet sometimes to even been created. And that's that vision. 
So I'm not going to go too deep in that because I want to make sure I don't steal some of Alice's in Thunder. But just in that small bit of information that I gave you, begin to imagine the power that you have in others by simply by being able to engage with the way in which they think. So for me, I, I never really know what I'm going to talk on half the time before I even stand up here. Um, or even days before, because for, personally for me to do any one of these talks, I always like it to be fresh, and in part because every day gives me a new story. If I'm doing training, I will tell stories on the underground where I saw somebody give up a seat to somebody else. Or in the, in the, when I went to Specsavers, I didn't plan this, when I went to Specsavers the other day, and the person said to me, um, can you give me a minute? And I waited for him. And I said to myself, why didn't he say, um, I will help you in a minute? He made me do the work. And I wrote down in my notes, interesting language. Make me wait for you or I will help you. And so every step of our day is filled with stories. It's about how we also translate them. So whether we are an official storyteller or we are pulling stories from real day life, to me, everything has an opportunity to be a story. So as I was laying in bed at 4 o'clock, which is not the time I want to be awake, but seemingly is the time I'm awake, these three words came to my head the other night. And after about 10 or 15 minutes, and I'm sure we have all been there, them rolling around in my head, I had to get up and write them down. So maybe I could park them to the next day. But these three words stood out for me over and over in my head about what is storytelling all about. And these words of memory meaningful and motivation began to play around and, and play around in my head about how important these are when building a brand, when being a leader, when guiding others, when being a parent. How we have memory is your memory is what makes you. And, and funnily enough, I don't know, does anybody as they go through time start to remember all kinds of things? Does that and I'm, because I'm Canadian, this is a big part of my memory. And then time started spinning in my head. Who knows what this is from, this song? Wrong audience. Well, if you're awake at 4 o'clock in the morning, who knows? There you go. Thank you. And Quantum Leap was playing as I was rolling in my head. Quantum Leap is a, it's an American show. It's from probably the 70s, it must be, maybe going back there, 80s. <laughs> I aged myself. 80s, 90s it probably was from. And it's about a man who travels through time. He keeps entering into people's bodies and having to help them with something at whatever is happening at that time. But as I then began watching the show, I began thinking more about memory and more about timelines and the importance of a timeline. And I tried to go back to my very first memory. Who here has their very first memory program? What would your first memory be? My baby sister brought home into the family. Okay, but how old were you? Two and a half. Okay, yeah. So about two and a half. And do you see that vividly? Yeah. Yeah. And how much is made up and how much is you've orchestrated and how much is actual? Who knows? For me, I had to find this guy. This is my teddy. Did you have this one? There you go. I was lying there thinking, what is my first memory? And I remember my teddy bear's head being ripped off. <laughs> and my mother having to sew on this little tie. So I had a quest to find Teddy. Because it was about two and a half. And seemingly he is in the, was in the back of a wardrobe. <laughs> looking a little worse for wear. But I had to bring Teddy because, to me, the amount of memory that actually got stored within this small toy that was actually just stored up here. And it wasn't the toy that brought it. It was my memory that brought me to the toy. It's almost like, build the church and they will come. Or they built the church and others came. And that's often the way I think about memory is you have so much stored memory, it's how you begin to translate all of that memory into something more meaningful. As leaders, 
uh, it was something that Allison and I were talking about and said, you know, that about that leadership quality. Saying, I'm a big, I'm an important person and all this. I think those days are gone. People respond to real people with real stories and how we translate and connect with people um, and how those stories need to be meaningful to you or if you, like I believe, the brands are alive because brands are processed in our emotional brain and they are alive. Our businesses are alive. And whether it's a brand story or your, your story, what is more meaningful on how you connect to people? Um, anybody here had a pet chicken? God, I'm warming this crowd up for you guys. You got two pet chickens. Really, now? Ah, great. <laughs> wow. I, we could talk chickens, yeah. I had chicken for lunch, and I felt really bad when I was putting this up. Um, but when I thought about what in my life was the, some of the most meaningful stuff, I actually landed on a memory of a pet chicken. I grew up in Montreal. I was a street kid. Uh, I don't mean a street kid like collecting money in the streets. I grew up in, in a city. And then when I was about eight or nine years old, probably 10 maybe, I got moved to the country and lived in an old farmhouse. I was so far out of my element and I was so alone. And I had, to me at that time, the most devastating move of my life from my friends, being part of a big city, being part of a culture, to living on a farm and having nothing. And I became friends with what I, his name became Flyer. Now his name was Flyer. <laughs> simply because I was a 10-year-old boy <laughs> with not a lot of thought in my head. So I used to throw the chicken up as high in the air as I could, and he'd fly back down again. So to me, his name became Flyer. And as later in life, as I you know, started working and, and having some really great experiences in my life and really great gigs in my life, great talking opportunities, the thing that has always kept me humble in life, in everything that I do, is flyer. My memory of this pet chicken, I think, defined me as a person, and still defines me as a person. That even sometimes in the darkest days, some of the most inspiring things are happening. They may not happen at the time, or be, or be obvious at the time, but when we look back at what was dark, is sometimes something like flyer, bless his hearty, did, he did know how to fly. But think about those things that are most meaningful to you because those build the best stories. But also as we look inside organizations and brands, it's identifying what is at the core, what is at that DNA of that organization? Because that's where the brand story sits. It's not all the fluff that sits around it. it. What sits in the DNA, in the hearts and the minds of the people, but truly, as you as a leader, what sits inside you? And I, I do encourage people to go away and really think about your own brand story. Because from that creates motivation. It's not about creating stories for making great stories. It's actually creating stories that actually have meaning, that people connect to, inspire to, and be as real and authentic as possible in today's community. Because we, we spot liars easier than ever before. We spot fakes easier than ever before. And the simple way that that happens is the more exposure you, you have to anything, the better you get at it. If you want to play a violin, practice. If you want to really truly value and see authenticity, be around it. And so from motivation, I encourage everybody from a business point of view, go back and really identify what is your brand story. Some of it sits in the marketing department, some of it sits in the HR department. But a lot of it just sits on the shop floor. It sits in the people that live the brand every day. When we desire a great customer experience, a customer experience is ever going to only ever be delivered from people who actually believe that they are part of something bigger than themselves. So um, just so I can conclude quite quickly, uh, you know, one of the projects that we had done, and I have spoken about it before uh, at a, at working in a big hotel transformation project, one thing that I identified there with a lot of people, when they were trying to identify with their brand story, 
was as they were going through change, they seemed to feel like they were getting so much more stuff to do. Another thing I have to do, another thing I have to do. When they weren't really connecting with what is, that, what is the story behind the stuff? How can I create experiences that really captivate people? And so one of the very last story that I wanted to tell you, because um, it really resonated, resonated with the person that it happened to. Uh, the project that I was talking about was a hotel, and it was in Palm Beach. So nice location, kind of floating on the, in the ocean. And this young fella was given the task of going down to the beach and giving people popsicles as part of the guest experience. And he was kind of lumbering his way through it, going, Ugh, yeah. You know, yeah, do you want a popsicle? Yeah, what color do you want? Yeah, do you want a popsicle? And I knew this guy because I knew pretty much everybody in the hotel. And I took him off to a side and I really began to talk to him about popsicles for a minute. And how I just mentioned it to him, I said, do you realize what you just did to me? And he said, what? I gave you a popsicle. I said, no, you gave me my childhood. The last time I had a popsicle, I also was then in Montreal. And I remember us kids running to the front door asking my mom for a popsicle. So really what he, wasn't give, he was giving me was not a popsicle on Palm Beach. He was giving me a bit of my childhood. Because as part of their guest experience is to create experiences that make people feel whimsical and young and fresh and new. And that's exactly what he was doing with a popsicle. So sometimes it's how we ask our staff and our employees to do things. But as leaders, our jobs are to translate them in new ways. Telling I think his name was Nick. So telling Nick to give people popsicles was a chore. Allowing Nick to be a participant in what he was doing to them, it excited him. And now I personally can never look at a popsicle the same way, and I'm sure Nick can't either. But it was never up to the guests to tell him that story. Because I, I was part of it, the team, so I could translate it for him. But the, but the magic should have sat with the guest. Let the guest explore the childhood and what, and what the experience did, but also let Nick be a participant in the story that he's giving people.